Hey guys, welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Card Games Review. Here we have three interesting games on the tabletop. One is Set from Set Enterprises, and then you have Five Crowns and Quiddler as well. They also have three of their own unique junior versions of the game too. And we're going to be discussing the three main versions, Quiddler, Five Crowns, and Set. Each of these games is unique in their own way, and they offer something that's either based on rummy or based on memorization or even pattern recognition, which is pretty cool as well. We'll start with Set, go with Five Crowns, and finish up with Quiddler and I'll explain them all below. Okay, so we're going to first start off with the game Set. This one's pretty familiar. Most people know this game, but if you don't, it's a good one to start off with for Set Enterprises, the game Set. Over 35 awards. In the game, you're going to be getting a box, a set of rules, cards, and a little card tray here. There's also a couple additional cards that are going to show off their game. Set those aside. You're not going to need them. Take the two sets of cards, put them together, and make sure you shuffle them up and remove everything else off. You can play with pretty much as many players as you want, really, in this game, because all it is is basically trying to do, do pattern recognition. You're going to be putting out 12 different cards and you're going to then try and guess sets. Now sets are interesting because what you need to do is recognize the different types of cards, right? So you're going to have numbers, there's one, two, and three. There's color, like purple, red, and green. And then there's also shape, like triangles, so these little ovals here and these little swigglies. And also there's texture or, or yeah, or yeah, pattern or whatever. Like this one has the little lines, this one is full up, and um, this one here is blank. Now to guess a set after the dealer has been play is playing cards is one player that's doing this everybody's going to call set as soon as they see a set and they're going to take those three cards as fast as they can so it's basically a dexterity game so as soon as i play these cards maybe one player will go set and they'll claim a set and as you can see these three right here are a set so they would claim these cards now why are they a set well because you have three different colors because they have to all be different or all the same three different colors three of the same number three of the same uh, type of uh, shape and then three of the same texture they're all solids so that will work either all of the same or all all not the same and put these aside and then the dealer will deal out three more and as it goes along the next player is going to try and call out a set before anybody else set and he would pick up a set of cards here here's another set right here how are they a set well look at it if you can look at it you can see as we're playing the game how it kind of functions these all have the same pattern they all have different shapes and they all have different numbers one two three and they have different types so you got the oval the triangle and the swiggly so this is another set of cards the dealer will continue playing and the dealer's playing as well too as he's calling out these sets here and you're going to look at them again. Can you find something that's a set? I bet you can. These three right here are a set. So we'll take these as well. I'll explain that as well. This one here is open. This is in a three. This one here has got the lines in a three and another three and they're all closed off. And they're also um, the same shape, same texture, all that kind of stuff. So you can tell what a set basically is going to look like. And you're going to keep playing the game until the entire deck is out. Now, if you call set and there's actually not a set when you go to pick it up, you're going to lose a point. And the cards you have that you've acquired throughout the game are going to be a point each. So you don't want to call set unless you know for a fact it's a set. If for some reason you don't see a set on the board, like let's just pretend like there was no set on the board here, you would be, go ahead and add three more cards. And it would be extremely unlikely to not find a set amongst these. I think it's one in a hundred and something. It's, that's how unlikely it is. It's very hard to find not one uh, to not find one in 12, but in 15 it's almost impossible. Very, very low odds. And you're going to keep playing. If somebody discovers a new set, for instance, then you would just play with the remaining cards that were left on the table until you couldn't find another set in which you would draw three more. And then you would continue like that. The dealer has somewhat of a disadvantage, though, because he's telling you to deal the cards out, and people can call set whenever they want. However, at the cost of calling it too soon and losing those points. The game set is based on pattern, pattern recognition and trying to figure out which ones go together. Bam, here's another set as you can see one two and three all the same shape um as well as the, they're all open and uh yeah they, they're all they, they just there's here's a set <laughs> and you would keep going so nevertheless i think you understand how to play the game set it's quick it's fun it's a little dexterity game let's go to the next one so here for the next game of the three is five crowns by set enterprises as well and five crowns is going to come with basically the same components you're going to be getting the cards big stack of deck and then the box and a rule book to explain how to play the game we'll set all this aside and only keep the deck of cards out this is all you're going to need you're going to go ahead and take the deck and you're going to shuffle it quite a few times, make it nice and shuffled, and it's going to resemble that of a normal playing deck of cards. So you're going to be getting kings and jokers and, and all, all kinds of those kind of cards. So let's go ahead and take a look here and I'll show you. Nines, tens. Now what you'll notice two of the suits are different and there's multiple suits. You're going to have diamonds and hearts and stars and uh, clovers. And I think another here's a spade too, so there's at least those ones right there. And they go from Joker all the way up to the King, I believe. 
And so you're going to then take this here, and you're going to play rounds of, of the game. So if we play a three-player game, you're going to start off with the first round, which is going to be three cards. Everybody's going to get three cards to start with, and then they're going to be trying to make runs. Now, runs are going to be just simple, simple, simply like rummy, right? Where you're going to have cards, you're going to look at your cards, and then you're going to try to make a run, whether it's three nines or three sixes, any, any three of a kind is going to work, or any three cards in the same uh, suit in a row. So like eight, nine, ten, uh, king, queen, jack, those kind of things are going to work. Also, there's wilds in each round. Based on the round is going to be determining the wild. So the first round is going to be threes. Threes will always be wild in the first round. Second round will be fours. Next round is five, so on and so forth. So what we're looking at right here is that this three is a wild. It can be anything it needs to be. On your turn to start off with, you're going to uh, make sure you start the deck with one card next to it, similarly, similarly like Rummy. He's going to go ahead and start off first, and he can choose to either draw or uh, from the, the pile here or from the top of the pile here or from the deck. So if he doesn't want this joker, which he doesn't want, or the jack, which he doesn't want, he's going to take a card from the top, and then he can discard any card he wants. He can choose to discard this four here. Remember, however, if somebody goes out, you're going to have points in your hand, and you want to get rid of these things. If you can't, you don't want points in this game. The closest to zero, the better. The farther away from zero, the more trouble you are. The next player is going to get to go, and see, four, five, six would be nice, but they're different suits, so it's not going to work for him, so he's going to go ahead and draw a card from the top. That queen's definitely not what he wants, because that is going to be worth a lot of points at the end, and he doesn't want that. The next player is just looking for something. Oh, there we go. So he'll go ahead and discard this card right here. And what's going to happen is he's got his wild three, which will be an eight of hearts, a nine of hearts, and a ten of hearts. So he's going to place this down from his hand. So all these are in their hands. He'll place this down and he's going to go out. Everybody else is going to get another turn as well. And if they can, to try and go out as well. So this player is going to get to go again. He really needs to get a king. However, he has to choose to risk it. If he wants to draw a card from here and hopes to get a king, probably a good idea. We'll see what he gets, an eight. So he's gonna end up discarding a king. And then he's gonna have all these cards left in his hand because he can't go out. And he's gonna add them all up for points. And that's gonna be a lot of points. These guys are each worth uh, 11, 12, and 13. This is 13 points here, a nine and an eight. He's gonna add them to his tally of points. And then the next player is gonna have his chance and he will draw a card and hope. And he got, it's not gonna cut it. He's gonna get rid of this nine here. So close though, he had a seven and a nine. All he needed was an eight. So these cards are all going to be in his hand. He's going to add these all up, and that's going to give him 18 points. And so he, they're each going to have points, and this player will be at zero. So he actually got rid of his hand. Then you can go ahead and shuffle the deck up and place a new card out. We'll just move these aside, and we'll start with the next round. Ooh, a joker to start with. That's always nice. Each player is now going to get, on the second round, four cards. Now, they still need to make runs of, of three or more. Oh, look at those threes. Those would have been useful last round. But in this case, I think it'd be easier to try and make a run of four cards. So we'll look. And now fours are wild, and nobody has any fours, which is too bad, I suppose. But the next player is going to then be able to go first, which is this guy. And this guy is super, super lucky, because he's going to take that joker from no, no problem. And he's going to discard this nine. And now he can instantly go out. He's got four three. So he plays these from his hand, face uh, face up, and everybody else is only going to get one turn. And this guy's got nothing, so he doesn't know what he wants to get. He'll just go ahead and draw and hope for a wild. Uh, two jacks, that's not going to cut it. He'll discard this, and he's going to be in trouble. And then the next player is also going to go for the jack. Or, yeah, because then he can discard this queen. He can play these three, because it's a run of th it's three, uh, uh, three, and a, three of a kind, and then he's got this seven left over, which is going to be seven points. So he'll add this to his last score, and he will add this to his last score, and this guy will end up getting zero. You move on to the next round, everybody's going to get five cards, and then six cards, and seven, all the way up until the very last, which is going to be the king, in which case you're going to add up all the points for everybody, and whoever has the least amount of points is the winner of the game. That's basically how you play the game. Five crowns, moving on. So now onto the last one we have here, and this is Quiddler for fun, for the fun of words. And as you can see, similar, same style of pattern. You're going to also be able to get this book if you'd like to, which is the short word dictionary for two to five letter words. You're going to need to choose a dictionary to start with to begin the game. That way you have some reference and you can choose to challenge players if you want. Box, cards, insert, and the choice of a dictionary. Let's go ahead and set these aside, as well as the bonus uh, cards here that you don't really need. And in this game, it works very similar to five crowns, but instead of trying to have the least points, you're going to want to have the most points, in which case you're going to shuffle the cards up, and then you're going to deal them out with the same style of rounds. So you're going to give uh, three cards out to the first round, and uh, four cards to the second, and so on until up to the tenth round of play. In this game, it's going to work just like the same thing. You're 
have a card here, as well as choosing from here. You're going to look at your letters and you're going to try and make words. If you can make words, you can go out and you have to have at least two letter words to go out. And each of the letters are going to have points. We'll start with this player once again. I-D-U. That's not going to be really a word, is it? And you can't use proper nouns as well. You can't use maybe Ida or whatever. So we're going to take one of these cards here. Let's see what I got here. Rid. So you can go ahead and discard this. And he's got a word, so he'll play the word out and he has gone out. Now he's got rid. He's been gotten rid of. Now, if a player doesn't believe in that, that that is a thing, he can actually choose to challenge that with the dictionary. However, he might accumulate a penalty if he gets it wrong. Uh, otherwise, this player will get a penalty. The next player here, he's got Y-U-I. That's a tough one, so he'll draw from the deck and hope he gets something good. Nope, that's no good. So he's going to discard one of these cards. He'll probably discard the one with the highest point value. And he's going to be, uh, get, uh, he's going to be having all these stuck in his hand. And in which case, going to the next player over here, and he's got a B-A-W, Ba. Maybe he will go ahead and draw a card here. And just like every other player, he can go ahead and discard one of the cards. He won't need this B here because he's got the word Way. So he's going to also go out along with this player. This player gets nothing. He's going to put this over here. These players are going to get the points. So 10, 12, and 16, and 12 points for this player. In every round, there's a bonus for... Um, either the longest word or even the most words and in which case in a two player you only choose one in a three four or four player game you choose both of those but if you look here they both have the same amount of letters and they both have the same amount of words so no bonuses will be acquired but it will make more sense in later rounds after you've gone and tallied the scores you'll take all these cards here and put them back into the deck but we'll just move these aside for now and then shuffle them all up and deal out again for the next round and in the next round you're going to have four cards just like the last game right making sense i imagine and look at the cards again, see what they've got, and players are going to then try and go out again by trying to score as many points as possible. Some of them are more difficult than others, as you can see. There's the X worth 12 points, CL is 10 points, and QU is 9. It's nice that it has QU together, though. And so we'll have the next player go. He's got F and T H I N. This is good. That's thin. Maybe he'll draw a card. He'll put, we'll put the card out, actually. Now, can, now we can choose a G or a card from the top. We'll go with the card from the top. Can we do something with this? I don't know. T-E. We got 10. That's something. And then we got the. Ha, that would work. So we would go ahead and discard this F. And he's got the words the and the word 10. And now the next player is going to get to go. So you get to go out really early in these games. But it's going to be more accumulative, more difficult to go out as the words progress and the more cards you need in your hand. And players are then going to choose one of these or draw one of these and continue playing the game, trying to score as many points as they can, getting the bonuses with the two words. This is going to be a likely if he's likely to get the two-word bonus here or getting the most letter bonus until the final round where you're going to tally up the score. And whoever has the most points in Quiddler is going to be the winner. So those are the three games. You got Set, you got Five Crowns, and then and you got Quiddler. These games are classic games, especially set. And let's go ahead and talk about them, starting with this one first. Set is a visually percep per visual perception game in which you're going to try and collect sets of three. It's excellent. It is so easy to teach and so easy to learn. And as you play the game, you're going to get better and better at it. When I started playing with my wife, she was having difficulties. But after two or three games, she started stomping me. And now I can no longer beat her at it. It's one of those games where you're going to want to play again and again. I've, I've played this game more times than I I can be frank with you to count. I don't really know because we played it something. We played it live. This game is excellent. I love set. Uh, five crowns here. This one is based on luck, realistically. You're going to be drawing cards, and the only real aspect you're going to be doing is either drawing from the deck or drawing from what's, what's available uh, up front. And so you have to know which is going to be the most likelihood for you to succeed by going out. But realistically, sometimes you can get so lucky that you're going to score zero points every single round, which is what I did in one of my live plays. I literally went out every single round and everybody else scored 100 points up and I scored zero, which is perfect in this game. However, I can see how some people would really dislike this game due to the amount of luck, maybe more modern gamers. However, any like family board gamers, family game night, this kind of, that kind of stuff, or even with little kids, this is definitely one of those games to pull out. It's really easy to teach 
Beach, and it's also kind of a gateway game into Rummy. So minus the luck factor, if you don't mind that aspect of a card game that's based around cards, Five Crowns is definitely one you suggest. I suggest you checking out. You got Quiddler here for the fun of words. It's a two to five player, five word game in which you're going to be trying to gain points in this one by playing the same style game as Five Crowns, but you're going to be making words. This one has a little more to it because you, it's going to be based on your vocabulary, so the luck factor is reduced significantly in this one. And it's going to also give you that learning aspect in the game too. It's very enjoyable, even though I'm not very good at making up words off the spot, off the top of my head as on the spot. It's one of those games that I've progressively gotten better at because I've started learning three word, you know, three to five letter words. And this little dictionary thing is very nice and very helpful. If you want to get both, I would definitely suggest doing so. There's a ton of words in here now that I've learned that I didn't know previously. In fact, there's a couple of a couple interesting ones here on the first page that I was like, what? I don't even know what it was. Here it is. A A. Cindy cin Cindery Lava. <laughs> AI, a three-toed sloth. It's a plural with an S too. So there's like some interesting ones in here that you would never you never think of. But the game has a lot more um, English added to it, and it's good for kids specifically. And so all these games are really really fun and very very enjoyable. But if you think those are still a little too much for maybe your younger kids, you've got Set Junior here, and this is for three and up. And then you've got Five Crowns Jr. and even Quiddler Jr. These are for the littler ones. I haven't busted them open yet, but I imagine they're very similar in how they play, but with more of a kid theme as well as probably easier, specifically the ones that involve the words, and then how to uh, acknowledge the sets. They tell you kind of how they function, and they're probably even bigger, I imagine. The set Jr.'s got a lot bigger cards, I think. Oh, it has a little playmat too, which is pretty cool. Nevertheless, though, all these games are really fun. If you've ever heard of Set, it's definitely one you should uh, check out if you haven't. And uh, I would suggest picking it up. If you haven't played a visual game like that before, this is definitely one I would have in my collection. It's going to stay in mind, and I know I'm going to be playing this for a very long time. The other two are solid games. It's going to be stuff I'm going to bring out with my grandparents, it's going to bring out with my parents, game people that aren't really as much gamers. It's specifically going to be a Scrabble player for the one that's Quiddler and anybody who likes a deck of playing cards for the game Five Crowns. All in all, though, this three set is amazing. Fun, fun games. You can pick up any of them separately as well as buying all of them together on the site. I suggest you do so. Look in the description below if you're interested. Overall, state of approval. Wonderful games.